A Florida appeals court has blocked Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's so-called Stop Woke Act by upholding a lower court's ruling that found the law violates the constitutional rights of private companies in the state. Fascinating. So before we get to yesterday's ruling, here's a little history on the bill in question and the previous legal battle that it underwent. Now the Individual Freedom Act, better known as the Stop Woke Act, was one of several bills Republican Governor Ron DeSantis signed in 2022 as part of his war on woke ideology. It was intended to prevent teachings or mandatory workplace activities that suggest a person is privileged or oppressed simply based on their race, sex, color, or national origin. Now the law prohibiting these types of trainings in workplaces, it prohibits like these types of trainings, like race-based training, things like that, DEI trainings in places like private companies, public schools, colleges, and universities. DeSantis has framed this as a tool for employees and students to stand up against discrimination. Since you know some of these seminars or conferences that companies or you know various institutions have um, could like focus on you know white individuals in the company, maybe like targeting them and and arguing that they are privileged. Like it could make them feel discriminated against. That's the argument that DeSantis and his supporters were making. Now, in a previous statement, DeSantis said, "No one should be instructed to feel as if they are not equal or shamed because of their race." In Florida, we will not let the far left woke agenda take over our schools and workplaces. Now, a federal judge initially blocked the enforcement of certain parts of the law dealing with corporate trainings. And this happened in August of 2022. They said that it discriminates on the basis of viewpoint in violation of the First Amendment. So they cited the First Amendment and free speech rights for the reasoning in blocking it. And is in um, impermissibly vague in violation of the 14th Amendment. Now let's pivot to yesterday's ruling where um, an appeals court upheld the lower court's ruling. Okay, it was a panel of three judges and they made similar arguments about the First Amendment. Um, and how did this case even come to be? Well, honeyfun.com, an online wedding registry website in Clearwater, argued in court that the law would prevent it from holding an employee seminar about women's advancement in business and institutional racism. Primo, a franchise of Ben and Jerry's ice cream with stores in Clearwater and Tampa, argued that it would be prevented from teaching employees about systemic racism, oppression, and intersectionality. And so the three judge panel of the US Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit ended up ruling that the part pertaining to private companies exceeds the bounds of the First Amendment right to freedom of speech and expression. Judge Britt C. Grant, who was appointed by Trump, wrote the following opinion, stating that by limiting its restrictions to a list of ideas designated as offensive, the act targets speech based on its content. And by barring only speech that endorses any of those ideas, it penalizes certain viewpoints, and the greatest First Amendment sin. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. Yeah, it's exactly what I was gonna say. I mean, this is such a core First Amendment violation. The government telling you what you can and can't say. This is so ironic coming from the freedom of speech guys. If you remember the 2020 convention of the Republicans, almost every speech of it was about, hey man, we got freedom of speech rights here in America, freedom, freedom, and we're allowed to say, because at the time they were saying all sorts of racist and sexist, etc. stuff, and then Trump was saying it, and they wanted to defend their right to say it. So they were pretending that they were in favor of all freedom of speech, when that's not remotely true, especially in the state of Florida. Florida has also passed laws saying that, if you disagree with the government of Israel, the government of Florida can punish you. Similar laws have passed yeah. in Texas, yeah. Yeah, it's a, that's the most outrageous First Amendment violation, let alone the fact that why are you guys passing laws preventing us from criticizing foreign countries? That's so mental, I can't wrap my head around it. But from the guys who claimed that they were in favor of the First Amendment freedom of speech, and now DeSantis does it again. 
Companies, if you want to say something against racism, you are not allowed. So that, do they have to be pro-racism? Do they have to be pro-sexism? This is a total insanity. Besides like which there are abuses, in my opinion, like I of some level of some what some companies teach their employees about who's at fault, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we need to have conversations about that, and we need to talk that through without us saying to companies, "You are not allowed to do say this, and you must say that," especially on this topic. Look, I don't think it's the role of the government to step in and control what kind of you know trainings private companies should be able to do. So I, I agree with this ultimate decision, I do. I, but I also agree that there are some examples of DEI trainings that actually end up being far more toxic for the work environment as opposed to being helpful to the work environment. And so one example that I've actually talked about on the show before was when the DEI trainer over at Uber ended up getting suspended because she was listening to some of the white female employees there who didn't want to be called Karens by their colleagues at Uber, which is like the most understandable thing ever that creates a hostile work environment. So she wanted to have a you know special seminar like meeting to discuss that and hear hear those employees out. And it led to a huge conflict within the company because she had the audacity of wanting to represent the concerns of some of the employees who happen to be white females. Like it was and then she ridiculous. Was suspended and punished yeah. for daring to have an open and honest conversation about that. But that's for Uber to deal with. That's not for the government to deal Agreed. with. Yeah. And so I think Uber made a terrible decision there. By the way, she wasn't even white, she was Asian. And so she's like, but we should also not discriminate against our white colleagues. And people were like, boo! Now the people who you know criticize her so much that led to her suspension, of course they don't think that they just wanna mindlessly attack white people. They don't think that, right? But they are. <laughs> but but they do think I should be able to be be able to call even my coworkers names like Karen, right? If I think that that they're you know they're making a big deal out of something that they shouldn't, right. like whatever. Like, listen, you should treat everyone around you with as much respect as possible. Period, regardless of their background, nationality, gender, race. Like, it doesn't matter. Creating a hostile work environment is awful, and it because. One group was historically discriminated against. That doesn't give that group the right to then kind of lash out at their colleagues at work and create a hostile work environment. We all have to deal with each other for many, many hours every single day. Let's try to make it as pleasant as possible. Look, when the large companies started diversifying, was there racism and sexism? Totally. But through the yeah. roof, like legendary, epic, horrible discrimination based on race and sex, right? And that continued for a long time. And does it still continue in some companies? Of course, should you teach people not to discriminate inside companies? Definitely, definitely, no racial or sexual harassment, discrimination should be allowed. But you should not, but you should extend that to white people as well. And I like that's become a controversial thing. Like, no, you shouldn't discriminate against white people, that's nuts. That's not at all controversial. And so like then it's gonna force some people to sue if they think that they were discriminated against for being white. Oh, That's actually happened already yeah. with some public workers. I, I talked about it when I covered that Uber story. So there have been some successful lawsuits. And I'm sure that they'll be called racist, et cetera, et cetera. But guys, I don't, it's not, I've said this a hundred times. The progressive idea is to fight against injustice. It's not to do injustice, okay? So saying everyone should be equal, excellent, perfect. And should black people have 1% less rights? Hell no, no way, same exact rights. Same for women and men, obviously. But if you then turn around and go, well, I want special privileges that to be able to discriminate against white women, white men, that's nuts. That is fighting for injustice and so, but remember, that's not what DeSantis was doing in this case. DeSantis did a blanket prohibition against companies that was way overbroad. It was that did vague. not allow them to make decisions about how to fight discrimination within the workplace on their own, right? In in through the proper channels, and it said 
It made it seem like you can't even fight discrimination in the workplace. So it was very toxic and it was definitely unconstitutional and now the courts have agreed.